How has it been round all the fucking psychopaths, the murderers, the serial killers? Well, one of my workout buddies, his name's Daryl Holmes. But I don't even think that's his name. He, he killed three people by chopping our heads off in the Colorado system. It was in the Colorado system, state of Colorado. He killed an inmate, cut his head off. He killed a guard, cut his head off. But what made him... If you're a psychologist working in any federal prison in America, I don't know if they're still doing it, but back then, you had to read the dossier on Daryl Holmes. The reason you had to read, there was one prison psychiatrist in his jail in Florida. Uh, I think his name was Willis. Anytime he had a free free time, he would call loudspeaker, um, tell Marcelano to report to my office. And all he wanted to talk about was Daryl Holmes. Because I knew him. He was my workout buddy. What he did this, Daryl Holmes, you know the movie uh, with John Voight, a runaway train? Mm -hmm. The movie starts with John Voight. They actually had him welded in the cell. Well, that story came from Daryl Holmes. They actually welded him in the cell in the Colorado system. And he peeled it because it was uh, inhumane treatment. And he won. And uh, they shipped him to Marion. And that's where I met him. He lived next to me. And Marion, uh, they crack, when you, when you work out, they crack five cells at a time. So those five guys, you're going to get out. You're going to get your shower. We, we used to, you're only out an hour. We, we work out for about 30 minutes, quick shower, and get back in, you know. So he worked, lived next to me. So when he, the cells were cracked, uh, you know, we work out. And, uh, but I knew who knew who he was, and uh, oh, about about the how he cut the psychologist's head off. When he was in the Colorado system, the cell was welded. The psychologist was very connected. He didn't even work for the prison, but his family was very rich, and the governor gave him permission to to go to that prison and interview and study. Daryl Holmes, because Daryl Holmes has already cut two people's heads off. He caught a guard, sneaked up on a guard on the toilet, cut his head off. And uh, so uh, he gets permission from the governor to try to find out how Daryl Holmes ticked, what made him work. Daryl, when he came to the cell, he says, I'm having the cell, I'm welding the cell. I want to talk on an interview. Dal said to him one sentence, leave me alone. This guy didn't, didn't leave him alone. So he started, and in, in, in those maximum security jails, when you come out, even though you're in handcuffs and leg irons, you're called a uh, guard's hole. You can go from a 10 guard escort down to a two. When I was in Marion, I was on a four guard. Every time I came out that cell, say I had to go to the medical or dentist, I had four guards around me, four. And then it went down after I was there a while, went down to two. Dow Holmes had 10 guards. When they took him from point A, point B, to the psychiatrist's office, and guess what? He was about five, Dow was about 5'10", five, 5'11", five, good-looking guy. He actually looked like the actor Peter O'Toole when he was young, right? So, takes him down to the psychiatrist's office and he's talking to him, you know, this is a year. But in a year's time, it went from 10 man down to eight, six, four, so down when he finally got, cause the psychiatrist, no, just put two guys on him. When he got down to two guys, they're not in the office when you're being interviewed. They're up, they're somewhere. And if they know the interview is long, they might go get lunch or something. So when they came back, you know what was on the desk? His head. His head. <clears throat> and you know what Daryl told the warden? He said, I told him to leave me alone. So so now I, he's my workout buddy. And I had some friends on the cell block. I had, I don't know if you heard the MA, Mexican Mafia. They were my, the original guys, Black Bob, Champ. These were the original. And then you had the real Aryan Brotherhood. You had uh, Barry Mills. They did a big, big documentary on the Barry Mills. 
he ordered to he ordered 40 guys killed over the years did you ever come across michael thompson he was in the aryan brotherhood but i think he became a snitch because of someone kids were killed i didn't know thompson <clears throat> i know i knew barry mills i knew td bingham i knew a, a, a couple of the leaders around the other joints anyway and uh they wouldn't talk to me they would whisper to me i switched man we don't want nothing to do with that guy. He, we don't want nothing to do with that guy. And uh, so now, and he was very, uh, he would train, he would put a blanket on the wall and he would do martial arts at Barry Mills. I'm not Barry, uh, Daryl Holmes. So how did, anyway. How did they cut his head off? He he told me it's, it's, he's, it's, it's, he said you had to have a towel and a knife he says because the front all the blood gushes out and he says you got it this is the intricate part getting to the neck <laughs> he says you gotta know how this is this is how he's talking anyway the warden like i told you before a warden makes the rounds every cell block once a week i don't care what prison you're at that's his job so uh you know there's open bars so the warden uh, Dow was talking to the warden. He says, Warden, I've been here over three years now. I haven't caused any trouble. Now, your programming, your programming states, if you're here three years and you're no problem, I'm eligible to be transferred. I want to go back to the Colorado system. And he says, if, you, I, I, if I'm not out of here in two weeks, the head's coming off. I'm telling you now, it could be your head. It could be somebody on his block. Guards, the head's coming off. Now you can get your goon squad and you can search every inch of the cell. You could, they had x rays too. They take the inmate down x rays, see if he had it nice up his ass or something, right? He said, You ain't gonna find nothing, but I'm telling you, the head's coming off. So he, he leaves. So now I ain't wrecked yet. We ain't wrecked yet. So I said, Oh my God. So we, you know, we do burpees, you know, we know what burpees are, this and that. So we wreck. I got a towel around my neck. I got a towel. And he, he looked. He, I never had a towel tied around my neck. He looked at me and he smiled. He says, George, you're the only friend I ever had. Because I used to look out for him. He says, your head ain't going to come off. Don't worry. <laughs> you, you can take the towel off. <laughs> so now, that was How the front. fuck could you still trust the psychopath? Do you know what I mean? So now the warden came back Saturday morning. This was Friday afternoon. <laughs> the warden comes come back Saturday morning he's in this he's not in a suit and tie he's in leisure show, show but the warden never comes close to the bar he's the good three four feet from the bars he knows better than that he said Daryl no he said Holmes Holmes I talked to the governor of Colorado I will have you out here and within two weeks or under please do not do anything I promise you so he says, all right, all right, as long as you said I'm out of here in two weeks. And he was out of here in two weeks. Now, I don't know what they did to him when he went back to the to the Colorado State Penitentiary. I don't know. Why was he not in a straitjacket? No, Marion, uh, you, you, you're never going to be with a guard, near a guard in Marion. A guard is always on the other side of the bars. Now, when you, you have... In Marion, Illinois, you're only out of your cell 11 hours a week. Once a day for your shower, two hours inside rec and two hours outside rec. And there's only, uh, they take the 17 guys, the top tier, 17 guys, the bottom tier. But when you go to the yard, it might be three, four guys, but they tell you. Now, when you go to the yard, you're, every, every inmate is... Is is leg ironed and handcuffed behind the back, and a and a guard holds you, and you go to the yard, and then the yard they take it take it all off. But they tell you, you're not coming in, because they're not going to bring the whole all these guards to take all these guys back. Once you go out there, you ain't coming in. And I've been. You want to go outside. You want to get fresh air. So I would go to the yard, and I put on my boots, my prison boots. And I remember one time, it was like probably zero degrees in Illinois, and I ran the whole, whole time, well, a little over two hours. I ran the whole 
time. And I, and when I came back in, you know, you got this little tin mirror and you sell. I looked like Frosty the Stoneman. I had icicles all, all over me. But you wanted to get out, but you ain't coming in. If a guy drops dead out there, they'll leave him out there. They'll bring everybody in before they go, uh, go get that guy.